Hello to all physics, astronomy, and other science enthusiasts. I'm Andrei Shchetnikov. Not long ago, we made a video about how people measure the distance to the nearest stars using parallax. And knowledgeable viewers suggested that it would be good to talk about the aberration of light as well. Indeed, that's a good idea, and I'll take care of it right now. The phenomenon of aberration was discovered in 1728 by the English astronomer James Bradley. But actually, he wanted to measure parallax, and instead, he discovered something else. And now we will talk about how his instrument was designed and what exactly he discovered. Bradley used a special refracting telescope for his work, which pointed straight up to the zenith. And it could tilt a little in the meridional direction. And this is the deviation of the telescope's axis from the vertical. It was adjusted and measured using a micrometric screw with an accuracy of up to half a second of arc. For his observations, Bradley chose the star Gamma Draconis. Because in the area where the observations were conducted, it passes almost through the zenith and it's also bright. It can be observed through a telescope not only at night, but also during the day. And he discovered that throughout the year, this star passes through the meridian. Not in the same spot, but it makes peculiar oscillations to the north and south with an amplitude of 40 seconds, arcs. When such an unusual phenomenon is discovered, the first thing to do is to check the instrument, which is what Bradley did. But everything was fine with the telescope. And he also understood that this is not parallax, because with parallax, the speed of movement of a star is along the meridian. From observation to observation, from day to day, it should have been at its maximum, in March and September, but in his observations, it was at its maximum in December and June. But another hypothesis was that this could be nutation, which is a slight wobble of the Earth's axis, which would lead to similar results. But observations of other stars showed, as I won't present these conclusions, right now, that this isn't nutation. Although it was Bradley who discovered nutation 20 years later. It actually exists. Well, since these explanations were rejected, a new one needed to be found. And here's what Bradley came up with. And to understand this explanation, it's helpful to imagine that you're riding in a train while it's raining outside. And even though the raindrops outside are falling vertically, you see them sliding diagonally down the glass. The thing is that in the train's reference frame, the speed of the raindrops is made up of the vertical speed of their fall and the horizontal speed at which the Earth is moving. Next to the train, and this is the speed of the train, taken with the opposite sign. The faster the train goes, the more the raindrops deviate from the vertical and the tangent. The angle of deviation is equal to the ratio of the speed of the train to the speed of the falling drop. And if you were on an open platform in the rain, trying to catch the falling rain in a tube, you would have to hold the tube at an angle so that the drops would go through it. Now imagine that this tube is a telescope, and you are catching the light coming from a distant star, while your platform is the Earth, which is rotating around the Sun. And I depicted the Earth in orbit. From the light of the stars that are coming perpendicular to the plane of the orbit, from the pole of the ecliptic, which is located in the constellation Draco. To observe such a star, the telescope's tube will need to be tilted in the direction of the Earth's movement. And after six months, the tube will be tilted in the opposite direction. The annual angle of the tube's tilt, according to Bradley, was 40 seconds, arc seconds. So the angle of the telescope's tilt relative to the true direction towards the star is 20 seconds. And now, knowing the amount of aberration, we can find the speed of light. The angle to the star is 20 seconds. And now, knowing the amount of aberration, we can find the speed of light. The cotangent of this angle is equal to 10 to 300. And that's how many times the speed of light is greater than the speed of the Earth in its orbit. But we know that the speed of the Earth is 30 kilometers per second. We multiply by this number and get 310,000 kilometers per second, 3% higher than the accurate modern data. That's a pretty good result. But by the way, Bradley, he couldn't present the result in that form because he didn't know yet. With good accuracy, the distance from the Earth to the Sun 
It was later determined by the transit of Venus across the Sun's disk, and we have a separate video about that. Link below. But he could calculate how long it takes for light to travel from the Earth to the Sun, and according to his data, that time was 8 minutes and 4 seconds. And now we can move on to different... An interesting question, and the first question will be like this. Here I'm talking about the annual aberration, which is related to the fact that the Earth moves around the Sun in its orbit at a speed of 30 kilometers per second. But the Sun itself is also moving around the center of the galaxy at a speed of 230 kilometers per second. So why am I not mentioning this kind of aberration? Such an aberration does exist, but it doesn't relate to observable things, in the sense that to notice it, the Sun needs to complete a significant part of its full rotation around the center of the horoscope. After all, this whole phenomenon is based on the fact that the observer changes the direction of their velocity. And keeping this fact in mind, you will certainly be able to figure out our final question, which this time will be like this. Let the Earth move at a speed of 30 kilometers per second around the Sun and somewhere out there far away. There's another object moving in the same direction at a speed of 30 kilometers per second. So, the Earth and this object are stationary relative to each other. Will the phenomenon of aberration be observed here? Share your thoughts. An analysis of this situation in the comments for this video on YouTube.